Welcome to AI TV. Today we're broadcasting here from Cape Town. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Jacques Ludic, who's the CEO of the Cortex Group. Welcome, Jacques. Thank you very much, Nick. It's great to be here. Again. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we're, it's, uh, we've been having conversations over this year. I mean, Jacques, it's, you've been, a, I guess, a, a, an AI pioneer in, in this region uh, as early as early 2000s. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about your journey. Yes, uh, Nick, it's quite interesting. So I, my whole career has been built on AI. I actually did my PhD in, in AI and in, in machine learning. Actually, what we did was the, uh, the whole spectrum of AI. It was like fuzzy logic, machine learning, expert systems, uh, genetic optimization, all of it. But my, I specialized in machine learning, um, and specifically recurrent neural nets. Um, and, and my master's and PhD was in that area. That was mid 90s. Uh, did some research and started applying AI in various sectors in, in, in the business space. So we collaborate, collaborated with the business school, but also collaborated with uh, the Department of Chemical Engineering and Process Engineering, Electronic Engineering. And start and obviously meeting some of the people that eventually became some of my partners in my first AI business. In we, we started in 98, 99, which was the time Google started. Um, so it's very early days. Yeah, I mean, and probably <laughs> the first in the Western Cape, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, well, when I did my PhD, I was probably the first in, in South Africa. Uh, there was no, or, or even Africa. I don't think there was a lot of focus really at, on, on AI. Um, in Africa at that time, so it was uh, fortunate. Well, it was actually it was just great. It was a, I, I loved computer science. I loved pattern recognition. All these kind of things. I was fascinated by the the subject, and uh, I didn't know where this was going to end. So it's been unbelievable journey so far, um, and learned so much. And, and one of the things I did in the late '90s was even building models of brain disorders, working with Professor Dan Stein, and he's still in academia. He's now at UCT. And he's been one of the most prolific uh, researchers in, on the African continent. He's been a, like a top rated researcher and he's still in this area. But um, it was interesting the things we did. So we actually built these recurrent neural network models um, where we simulate some experiments um, uh, that was applied to patients uh, that's got OCD and all of it. And you make lesions to this network and you see the effect and you simulate eff effectively what's happening. So it's yeah. fascinating stuff. And it was a book out, Neural Networks and Psychopathology, around that. But anyway, that's how it started. It was a lot of research and academia stuff, but I was always intrigued by the applications. Can we solve problems? And, uh, and, and obviously, the whole C-Sense journey was fascinating, working especially in the financial services sector. And we appointed, you talked about the Western Cape, but the Sunlum, Suntum, uh, there was Liberty Life. There was a lot of these customers initially, but our, our main uh, um, focus area was, was the industrial space at that time, which was a good choice because you had Sassol, uh, Richmond Minerals, and Beach Bablet, and, and, and Lonman, and all these companies. And it always also provided us with an entry into other, uh, because they're multinational, they're also operating in Australia and Canada and other places. So we started rolling out our AI solutions, not only in Africa, but also uh, abroad internationally, and that opened the door for us. And then from there, it's, it was not only minerals, metals, mining, but also manufacturing. Um, and uh, so it was fascinating. Learned a lot. Um, thought of doing an MBA and things after my PhD, but well, like you in business, you're uh, you just jump straight into <laughs> <one> <laughs> we just jump yeah. straight in, learn, and uh, and there's no there's no substitute for that. So now uh, you've gone on to build Cortex. Uh, yes, t tell people a little bit about Cortex. So. Yeah, so Cortex is, is driven by our massive transformative purpose, um, and that's helping businesses thrive and society thrive in the smart technology era. And I know we share a vision also around helping to shape a better future in the smart technology era and the work, incredible work that you've been doing in building an AI community as well. Um, that was the same with us, with Mia, obviously involved there. Um, but Cortex is obviously focused, is more the commercial entity and focused on um, um, operationalizing AI for enterprises. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, we do live in a very interesting world right now where you see these scalable platform businesses, um, the Ubers, the Airbnbs, and Facebooks and Googles, that's super impactful. And, and, um, and, and I think there's opportunity, because everything is becoming data-driven, to, to actually establish these scalable platform businesses, you either want to be an AI engine for that, helping to drive that, or you want to be that platform. So there's very specific initiatives um, that we are looking at right now. So it's like, a, to summarize, AI engine for enterprises. We learn a lot how to apply and solve problems. Some of the same things there can be utilized also in scalable platform businesses as well. And, and uh, 
I don't think the key thing is just to be very focused and selective. You can't do everything, we can't do everything. So there's very specific focus areas for us and that's it in, in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, <coughs> John, I mean, obviously early pioneer in this space, in this region, um, obviously Cape Town has a lot to offer yes. to tech companies in, yes. in, in general. Um, not, not just AI companies, but um, clearly the, the, the explosion of interest around AI and data science makes Cape Town a big yeah. destination for uh, companies wanting to set yes. up here, uh, interesting business climate, interesting uh, weather climate. Um, right. But, but what, what, what do you see as the key ingredients that make Cape Town this, this great melting pot for, for AI entrepreneurs? That's, that's a very interesting one because we were part of that initial, I, I'm just, my, my focus area, or at least, at least my environment initially was Stellenbosch University and Technopark. Because we, when I started CSIN Systems at that time, there was a few of these kind of smart technology companies coming to the fore. There was an, an sun, and satellites, and we were the AI company, and there were some others as well, engineering companies that started there as well. But what's the ingredients? I think there's, 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 there's obviously talent here. So we've got some really good universities in Stellenbosch and UCT and, and others here as well. But, but I think it's, there's, I don't know, there's, there's maybe a mindset here as well, and there's, there's kind of uh, this entrepreneurial mindset. Um, and, and, it's, and it's, we were just part of that. Uh, there's so many other examples where you see exactly the same thing. So I don't know if it's something in the food in the air or what, yeah. it, is, what it is, but, 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 but you, have to, uh, you picked up on it straight away um, when you started getting involved here as well. So, um, but yeah, I, we, we started our first, co with the first company right here. It was at Stalamash University at Techno Park the whole development team here, we had to move the executive team up to Joburg because most of our customers were up there, but our development was still here. Yeah. And it's the same year with Cortex, we see a kind of a repeat of that. We, um, uh, there is the main, the core is, is, is here, but we are very ambitious in terms of what we want to do elsewhere. But yeah, so what, what is the ingredients? I, 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 maybe we, I'm not sure if we even see mentors and stuff because I, I didn't, it was, it was just hooking up with like-minded people at that time, and we were kind of exploring. We were like uh, breaking ground, I think, at that time. But we were just, we just wanted to solve. We were to conquer the world. It was just amazing. Yeah. It was, I see something of maybe of the Silicon Valley that early entrepreneurship. They just, I think, it just sprang up, and, and there was more people that thought like that. Um, so, uh, and I think things have evolved since then. Well, there's the Silicon Cape initiatives, and you know about all the other things that's happening here, and. And I think the last three years, the, the traction has been incredible. It, it was really before that. That's why I, I founded MIA as well, the Machine Intelligence Institute of Africa, because we want to network together the critical resources around AI and smart technology. And it was almost like up to 2015, 16, it was not really a, yeah. a community. And that's what we independently started with our communities around this. Um, but, but there was other people, like you obviously talked to Zindi and, this, this, and Data Science Nigeria, it was elsewhere in Africa as well, this, t this type of thing. But so anyway, to answer your, your question, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's it in the Western Cape. Like a it's, secret source. It's, there's a secret yeah. source there. It's and, what, so, and what do you think, I mean, just to sort of wrap up, Joe, I mean, yes. what, what, what do you feel? I mean, obviously, we're, we're broadcasting out now to yes. the global community, yep. but I mean, what, what do you think we need to do here in the Western Cape and this part of South Africa, well, and South Africa in general, and, and Africa in general? What yes. do we need to do to grow this? Movement, yes. if we want to call it a movement. I think it's absolutely critical. I'm s sitting tomorrow at Stalamosh University in the strategy fund meetings with them as well. They've got interesting plans as well. It's great to have insights there. But what I think what we need to do is, is really collaborate and work together. We're going to be much stronger if we put all the resource, all the stakeholders really come together and 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 collaborate. And and um, so so I think I think so. What do we need to do? We need to. Really, f uh, I think we need proper funding as well. Social responsibility investment funding, we need to, but we will only get that if we really collaborate well, um, then we can attract um, proper money. Um, that's one thing. Um, I think the whole education around AI, we need to share a lot more. We need to be slick around how do we build this community. I, th I don't think we've tapped into the potential of what Mia and what AI media and what all, all the things that we're busy with can do. So, so we, I think we're just scratching the surface here. So, um, and I think from a Western Cape perspective, we need to take a leadership position here. Clearly, we, we, we've got a lot going for us here. So, 
if we can collaborate and showcase to the rest of Africa as well and the world how we can collaborate in an optimal way and how we get this right, we create an absolutely successful center of excellence around smart technology and then we can duplicate that and collaborate and help with other areas in Africa. And I think I saw a little bit of that with when we started MIA, we had these panel discussions with their data science bootcamp when they just started just trying to get off the ground. And then that helped a little bit, but then they created their own spiral and you just... What, yeah, I mean, by, I, yeah. it's interesting. I mean, I see you know, lots of interesting things going on. Across. I mean, to do things at the continental level is very difficult. Yes. Uh, but I think if we can see what, what suits a local, regional yes. kind of activity and learn from it and maybe yes. inject some of that back it, into our local ecosystem, that, that's yes. probably one, the next step that we can all take. But Absolutely. So it's always a pleasure. I mean, we never have enough time when we do <laughs> those <laughs> things, but Absolutely. it's great to get your insights. And, it, and it's one, I think, which uh, our audience will, will, will love to hear. And, yep. uh, Best wishes with, uh, with Cortex and, uh, and the growth plan ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, Nick. It was a pleasure, and thank you for all the excellent work that you're doing as well. It's, it's really appreciated, and I think you, you play an incredibly important role uh, in, in this whole space. So thank you. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Cheers. Good.